I feel grateful to Mayor Bradley because everything that I have been able to accomplish as a councilwoman was based on the fact that he started it. He started the downtown skyline, he started the transportation system, he, he started the, the impetus for changing the way that children are educated in this city. So, you know, I can't claim that I did any of this by myself. You know, the expression that people say about standing on people's shoulders, well, I think it's really true. And I, I think in our lifetime, he will probably go down in history as the, the greatest mayor that uh, we will ever know here in the city of Los Angeles, and quite arguably in, in, in this country, uh, for what he accomplished in the time that he served. And I think that his legacy is very, very precious. And I hope that we all continue to honor and respect it and remember it and to teach it to younger people who never had the privilege of knowing who he was. And he was a kind, gracious, intelligent, and highly accessible mayor. And uh, we should all rise to that standard. So thank you, Brandy, for, for sharing your family's memories of him. And uh, I think you and your family were very blessed uh, to have that special position in our city's history, too. Thank you. Many of us believe incorrectly that fraternal organizations like the Masons, the Shriners, and even the Divine Nine are made up of mostly older people. Like anything else, that of course is entirely not true. Let's head outside and talk to one of the younger members and get his perspective on being a part of these types of organizations and the impact they can have on a young person's life. And this is Chen Thomas Angsi, Newswire LA, and I am standing here with Sherrod Moore. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Good You're, to be here. You are here tonight in honor of Tom Bradley. Yes, sir. And the Divine Nine. Talk to us a little bit about what it's like being a younger member okay. of a fraternity. Uh, being a member of a fraternity is unexplainable unless you're a part of the organization. Um, many young people growing up in Los Angeles look for places to belong. That's why we have the gang situation. Um, and the fraternity brings about a positive aspect uh, with an immeasurable amount of, amount of growth within the organization and within the world. As you see uh, with Mayor Bradley being a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, uh, I'm sure in his days of undergrad, he was hard pressed to find himself as mayor of one of the most diverse cities in the world. Um, so it, it is a very good experience uh, being a part of the organization. One of the questions I explored with Dr. Blanton and, and uh, Mr. Baptiste when, he, when they were uh, doing our interview was the fact that as younger people, we're getting farther and farther away from the accomplishments of people like Tom Bradley, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X. Those are becoming farther and farther in the distance. And there are probably several African Americans or, or just several people in general who say, well, I don't know what this fraternity bit's about. It just doesn't seem relevant or it doesn't seem to have an impact on my personal life. As a younger guy, okay. what would you say to those people? Well, the biggest trick the devil ever did was making the world believe that he didn't exist. Um, we are only two generations out of the civil rights movement. Um, my mother was a product of the 60s. Uh, I was a 70s baby, raised in the 80s. So it's not far removed from us. The problem is forgetting that we are in the fight. Um, the civil rights its a is an ongoing movement. It's not just something that happened in the 60s. It's not just us being emancipated out of slavery. It's not just uh, the workers' rights that uh, Cesar Chavez fought for. It is a continuous struggle that we all must face on a daily basis. And if we don't do that, then we are doomed, as they say, to repeat our history uh, within struggles. So. I'm gonna challenge you even more. I'm gonna get a little more controversial with you right. on this subject. As we know, and it's been explored in film many times, that there are sometimes little divides between even us as African Americans, yes. light and dark, rich and poor, and everything like that. What would you say to somebody who would say, well, you know, that fraternity is only for those people, meaning those people in Baldwin Hills, those people in Ladera Heights, those people in View Park. What would you say to a young <laughs> brother coming out of South Los Angeles, you know, that this is something that he can do too, and what would you tell him? I am a product of Los Angeles County. Um, my mother had me when she was 16 years old. My family has been homeless several times. From that point, um, 
I was raised up to believe that education is the great equalizer. I received, uh, I graduated high school and I received uh, my Bachelor of Science from Upper Iowa University in Fayette, Iowa. I was always taught to believe that your circumstances should never determine your outcome. It's not those people. Those people are, are referred to as the people who want it. In life, we, have, we were taught coming up that we have the haves and the have-nots. Those, those, we're always displaying those things. You have the haves and you have the have-nots. But there's a third category that is seldom referred to in life, and those are takers. Um, there were haves and there were have-nots. I was a have-not. Um, my mother taught me that through education, I can take my success into my own hands, and I've done that. And for young people out there that think that the struggle is not for them, they think that success is not for them, then they need to become takers and understand that it is. Success is for those who choose to take it. What do you do when you're not standing in front of a uh, television camera? I'm standing in front of a television camera. I, <laughs> <laughs> I am... Uh, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm actually one of the spokesmen for the Freedom Writers Foundation in Long Beach. Um, in addition to that, I am a teacher at Long Beach Unified School District, as well as a coach at Long Beach Poly High School, as well as a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Wow. And a dad. That's okay. That's the biggest job of all. That is the biggest one. And tell us, and tell us what, it's, what it means to you to be here tonight, here on the 26th floor of the city of Los Angeles, of Los Angeles City Hall. It means that I can tell my daughter that she's part of a great legacy and that anything is attainable as long as she works at it. Um, there's no such thing as a glass ceiling if you're willing to do the work. That's what it means to me. And Mayor Bradley was a man that did the work. He went out, he spoke to the people, he respected the people and the people respected and honored him. And because of that, his legacy still lives today. And on that note, thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot, sir. I appreciate it. And before we leave tonight, we want to show you some of the breathtaking views we saw from the 26th floor of Los Angeles City Hall. These views remind us just how majestic this city really is. The legacy of Tom Bradley can be found in every point of light we see tonight. It's been a fantastic night here at City Hall. On a personal note, I am not a member of any fraternal organizations, but I have to say that I've learned a lot about it in just this short period of time. You'll note that the membership of these organizations is far-reaching and covers government, business, and so much more. Historically, the Divine Nine also serves as just one peg in the legacy of the African American community and its history. Until next week, we want to remind you that to follow everything Newswire LA, look us up on Facebook and Twitter at Newswire LA. I'm your host, Chin Tom Sanksy, saying good night, and we'll see you back here next week.
Stay tuned for more news on this Westlake Signal Station.